Today, let us take some time together to share God's words with the sermon titled, The Age That Needs Patience. There is a phrase, the beauty of spring is created by waiting. No one can make winter pass by faster to make spring come sooner just because they are impatient. Waiting is required for spring to come. Right now, we are in a depressed and difficult age. Experts are saying that this situation will continue, at least until the first half of next year. I believe that there is God's great will in letting us pass through this long tunnel that requires patience. The saints of the early church went through a long tunnel of darkness, being physically persecuted and threatened. In order for them to overcome the tunnel of darkness, God gave them more faith and courage. Now, due to COVID-19, we cannot freely meet each other and do the things we used to do in our lives of faith. However, we must not let this situation shake our faith and cause the world of our faith to become chaotic and unstable. The beauty of spring is made through patience and waiting. We cannot make spring come any earlier because of impatience. In the same way, patience is essential in the world of our faith. Just because we want an apple, we cannot plant an apple tree in the morning and harvest apples at lunchtime. We need to wait. God has given us a lesson about waiting through nature. In other words, patience. Then don't you think patience is something that we must have in this age? Therefore, instead of feeling anxious about the external environment, all the children of Zion should wait patiently. Two thousand years ago, Christ came to earth, preached the gospel of the new covenant, and ascended to heaven. He then came a second time to Korea, a far-off land in the east, to save mankind. He returned to guide us out of the 2,000-year-long tunnel and into the bright world of the truth. Soon, it will be the 36th year since Father ascended to heaven after teaching the words of truth that are to be preached in this age. It seems that we have been waiting a long time but God continuously sends us messages through the Bible that we need to be patient. You need to wait. You need to be patient. Even in nature, it takes time for a tree to produce fruit after it is planted. We need to wait until the tree grows and fruit starts to appear one by one. For this process, we need the beauty of patience and waiting. For those who let every day pass by doing nothing, a day may seem very boring. However, if we spend our time making every effort toward the mission that we have received from God, by diligently working for the gospel with all our heart, we will never become bored while waiting. Since the Bible is a letter that God wrote, it contains the will of father and mother. Therefore, through the Bible, God has given us a lesson that we need patience in this age. Let us see God's Word in James chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 11. As you know, we consider blessed those 
who have persevered. Those who persevere are blessed. We need to wait patiently for the kingdom of heaven. Until heaven is given to us, there are innumerable changes in the external environment. Satan uses those circumstances to shake our faith and tries to break us down by throwing us into countless circumstances to cause the center of our faith to waste away. Here, it is written, As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Job suffered from being put in an unbearable environment. Satan tested Job through various ways by taking away all his wealth, giving him a disease, and even taking the lives of the people around him. Although Satan used many kinds of torment, Job always said, God gives and God takes away. God has given me blessings. Can't he also take them back? He certainly can. Job's patience, with which he always gave thanks and glory to God, is mentioned in James chapter 5. Those who persevere are blessed. As the coronavirus pandemic has been going on for almost a year, there are different types of members. Some members' passion for the gospel work has become weak, and some have lost their hope for heaven. Let's see an example. When you look at a pond in the winter, you can see all kinds of things on top of the frozen water, such as stones and sticks. However, when spring comes and all the ice melts, there are changes that occur. All the stones that were on top of the ice sink. All the pieces of metal sink too. But things like leaves or blocks of wood float. Because they are all in the same place, same location, and same space, it seems like they're all the same. However, when spring comes, their natural properties are exposed. In the same way, in this last age, when environmental changes and external factors come into play, the density of people's faith, either firm or shallow, will be exposed on God's scale. Also, in Matthew chapter 7, it is written, that when streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house. People whose faith has been built on the rock are able to stand firm until the end. However, people whose faith was built on sand will collapse. Isn't that what Jesus said? We need to carefully read God's letter, which father and mother have given to us, in order to keep our faith until the end and enter heaven. It is because a letter contains the heart and will of the sender. Father and mother knew that this kind of situation would come in this age. That is why they said to us in their letter, those who persevere are blessed. We must keep these words in mind. Then, since God is teaching us to endure, what is the result for those who do not endure? Those who do not endure lose their right as the heavenly firstborn. That is why God said that we need patience. Let us go to Genesis chapter 25, verse 29. Once, when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. 
That is why he is also called Edom. Jacob replied, First, sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. As a result of failing to endure his hunger, Esau gave away his birthright. Today too, while we are walking in the path of faith, so many situations happen that require patience. If we are not patient, we will become disqualified, lose our rights, and lose the kingdom of heaven in the end. That is why God keeps telling us, wait until the end, endure until the end. Repeatedly through the Bible, God's letter of love. Let us read Exodus chapter 32 verse 1. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Here, Moses went up to Mount Sinai and didn't come down for 40 days. The Israelites ran out of patience. They couldn't even wait for 40 days, so they said, Our leader Moses is dead, so let's make a God who will lead us to Canaan. They ended up making an idol of a golden calf through Aaron, which provoked God to anger. Can't we see in the history of the Israelites that as a result of this, 3,000 people were killed on this day? Let us move to verse 21. He said to Aaron, What did these people do to you that you led them into such a great sin? Do not be angry, my lord, Aaron answered. You know how prone these people are to evil. They said to me, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, Whoever has any gold jewelry, take it off. Then they gave me the gold, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Let's see how many people were killed and failed to enter Canaan. Verse 25. Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control and so became a laughingstock to their enemies. So he stood at the entrance to the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Each man strap a sword to his side, go back and forth through the camp, from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day about 3,000 of the people died. Then Moses said, You have been set apart to the Lord today, for you are against your own sons and brothers, and He has blessed you this day. Therefore, if we are not patient, we will end up breaking God's commandments. Additionally, we will all be put to death 
on the way to our destination, Canaan. Everyone, we need patience. We need to stand firm in faith until the end. Let's look at the life of the Israelites in the desert 3,500 years ago. When they left Egypt, they had burning passion, excitement, and great hope for the land of Canaan, flowing with milk and honey. However, on their way there, they faced many situations that prevented them from entering Canaan. As their external environments changed, their minds changed, and so did their faith. Their faith was violently shaken, either to the left or to the right. Among the Ten Commandments that God engraved even on stone tablets, it was written, You shall have no other gods before me, and do not worship idols. However, the people acted so foolishly, it was because they had no patience. We need to stand firm until the end, believing that father and mother will lead us all the way to Canaan, the kingdom of heaven. However, there are slanderers, diseases like COVID-19, and other factors that prevent us from believing the truth. Even family and friends degrade us, saying, I heard that your church is a cult. They undermine us. Many factors weakened the resolution we had in the beginning, which was to go to heaven. People who lose patience cannot obtain heaven in the end. So, in Exodus chapter 32, when Moses did not come down from Mount Sinai for 40 days, the people ran out of patience and ended up worshipping a golden calf. If God promised to lead us out of Egypt and give us Canaan, then we need to go forward until the end, believing that promise. However, some fail to wait and lose faith due to the changing environment and circumstances on the way. This is the result of not having patience, even though they may have been full of energy in the beginning. Let us go to Numbers chapter 20. Let us see God's words written in Numbers chapter 20. God says, don't be like these people. And he lets us realize how important this age is. Let us look at chapter 20, verse 10. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. These were the waters of Meribah, where the Israelites quarreled with the Lord and where he showed himself holy among them. Here, the people grumbled against Moses and Aaron for not having water in the desert. As Moses and Aaron got tired of hearing their complaints every day, Moses said, Must we bring you water out of this rock? Instead of revealing God's glory, they thought of their painful situations first, so they failed to endure. Although God let them live as prophets, they could not enter their destination, the land of Canaan. Even Moses and Aaron could not enter Canaan. They died before arriving. It is needless to say that the Israelites who grumbled in the desert died before they could enter Canaan. All this history shows us how much patience we need in this age. We cannot set limitations when it comes to being patient. 
We need to be patient until the end of our God-given time on earth. On the way to Canaan, some endured for ten years, fearing God with patience. But then they fell in the eleventh year. Some endured for twenty years, but they fell in the twenty-first year. Some endured for thirty years, but then fell in the thirty-first year. However, if they fall in the thirty-first year, the thirty years before that becomes meaningless. Shouldn't we keep our faith with patience until the moment we enter the land of Canaan? Let's see the case of Job's wife. Job chapter 2, verse 4. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. But stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, he is in your hands, but you must spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the top of his head. Then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Job's wife feared and praised God when God blessed her. However, when she faced a little bit of hardship, all those moments that she had endured became meaningless. His wife said to him, Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. Those who are not patient act like this in the end. When the external environment changes and becomes even a little unfavorable and inconvenient. People tend to grumble against God instead of glorifying God. That is why God says, Give thanks always. Give thanks in all circumstances. Later you will understand why all these things happened to you. Neither Job nor his wife understood why all these things were happening to their family at that time. God let us know that it was Satan who tested Job's family through the writings of the prophets. Isn't that why God had the book of Job written? When we see the attitude of Job's wife, Moses, Aaron, and the people at the waters of Meribah in the desert, we can see that none of them had patience. We need patience in this age. Now, as the powerful infectious disease called COVID-19 has hit the whole world, many people are feeling depressed and cannot carry out their normal life. When we were preaching the gospel before, the fire of the Holy Spirit burned within us. However, we have not been able to preach much for one year, being bound by an unexpected lifestyle. So we may feel frustrated, like we're stuck in a long tunnel. Having faith until the end is more important and beautiful than walking the path of faith for decades. Let us turn to Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm to the end will be what will they be? They will be saved. We are living in the age that requires patience. 
We need patience to stand firm to the end. Whose faith is the best faith? If anyone asks that question, the answer will be, the one who stands firm in faith to the end has the best faith, even if someone has been in the truth for just a year or two. Only he who walks the path of faith until the end can be saved. Everyone, the time is near. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Only hold on to what you have until I come. We need patience to hold on to what we have until He comes. Verse 26. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. Here, when it says, him who does my will to the end, doesn't it mean that he has patience? Does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my Father. When we see these two teachings of God, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 25 and 26, we can understand that without patience, we cannot receive authority over the nations, or the title of the royal priesthood, or the kingdom of heaven, or the promise of eternal life. We will not be able to receive anything. No matter how the external environment changes, the faith of the children of Zion must always be established firmly on the rock, so that our faith is not shaken to the right or to the left. Let us go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere. Who said this? The Bible was written by those who spoke from God, being moved by Him. This is a letter from God. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. God promised to make us the royal priesthood. God promised to give us the glorious world where there is no death or mourning or pain and to bless us to reign forever and ever. All these promises are given to us. Verse 37, For in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay, but my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. Shouldn't we have this kind of faith that does not become weak or tired or weary until Father comes? God said, He who stands firm to the end will be saved. Now, since the kingdom of heaven is truly near, let us strive even harder toward heaven so that during the coronavirus pandemic, our faith will be able to develop and grow stronger. Then what should we endure and be patient for? Let us look at 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 14. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. We are waiting for this glorious moment with patience. When Father comes to this earth, 
with tens of thousands of heavenly angels, with the trumpet call of the archangel. The children of Zion will be transformed, meet God in the air, and live with God the Father and God the Mother in the kingdom of heaven, which is such a gracious world where joy and happiness is created every day. Such a glorious time is waiting for us. For this, we need to be patient. Just as it takes time to get fruit after planting a tree, we also need to wait in order to produce the fruit of the gospel. Don't we need winter, spring, and also summer in order to bear fruits in the fall? Therefore, we need to understand that the same is true for our faith. We must never learn from the example of the Israelites, who committed such foolish acts while they were in the desert, losing their faith and eventually leaving God due to their lack of patience. Even if the rain comes down and the winds blow, our faith must never be shaken since the houses of our faith are built on the rock. Although we are in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, let us not say, I cannot stand it anymore. There are many members who preach or teach online. We ought to carry out God's command to do the gospel work, adjusting ourselves to the environment God gives us in each circumstance. When we seek a way, doesn't God open all the doors? By doing so, let us be more hopeful during this difficult pandemic so that we can joyfully meet God shouting, Hallelujah! On the day God comes to this earth as the Judge and the Savior with tens of thousands of angels. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.